Hi everyone. So FreeDOS 1.3 RC5 contains a bunch of applications and games. And today I wanted to go over a selection of some of the games that we include in FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. Now I'm starting here with the standard uh, sort of plain DOS system that I installed in my other video. And there'll be a link in the video description for that. Now, when I did that, it was just a plain DOS system. I didn't install the applications and games, and so I need to install those myself using FD Impulse. That's the standard package manager that we use in FreeDOS. Uh, go down here, and you can see all the different applications that I can install, but also games. And so if I go over to games and hit the right arrow, I can see on the right-hand side all the different games that we can install with FreeDOS 1.3 RC5. If I'd chosen to do the full install with all the applications and games, then all these games would have been installed for me. Uh, but here, just because I did a plain DOS system, uh, it didn't install any of these games. Let's jump back up to the top of the list, and let's just select uh, a couple of these uh, uh, games to install. So let's go ahead and select, uh, let's do Emeritus Pong. And uh, what else do we want to do? Let's do uh, EW Snake. Uh, go down a little bit. Uh, we'll do F Mines. And a little bit further. Uh, what else do we want to play? Let's play, uh, let's, let's play Nudar. Nudar is a pretty interesting uh, dungeon crawler game. Go down a little bit. We'll do Tetris. It's a nice Tetris game. And then uh, let's do Smiley. It's a, a game that Jerome has been working on as part of another game he's actually been experimenting with. So uh, we'll go uh, tab over to the OK. We'll hit space. And that's going to install all of my games for me. So it doesn't take very long to install these games. Uh, now, if I do a directory, you can see that inside the games directory are all the games that I just installed. So let's go ahead and try some of these games. Let's go to EM Pong. And we'll run EM Pong. Now you, if are of a certain age, might remember the original Pong. That's why it's called Emeritus Pong. Pong was a, a, the first home video game system that you could actually you know buy and actually when i was growing up my brother and i uh got to play pong i think my parents brought it home from sears uh and it was sort of a, a, a two-player system each one of you had a knob you got to control a virtual paddle basically playing sort of virtual tennis uh, you can uh, play in different modes here, obviously play against a CPU, you can do a two-player game, and uh, you can uh, play solo, uh, and then, of course, you can do a Pong clock. Let's try each one of these in turn. Let's do a uh, play versus the CPU, and you can see here that I'm on the left, and so I'm going to use the up and down arrows. There we go. I got a point against the computer. And let's go up here. Now, I don't know if there's a maximum score for Pong. Uh, I've, I've played it a little bit through, and I, I, I'm not seeing if there's some sort of a maximum score which you win. It just seems like it keeps going. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to play the full game here. I just wanted to show off that you can actually uh, play a pretty interesting uh, game of Pong here. Now, uh, the game, as you keep bouncing the ball back and forth, will get a little bit faster. Uh, which does make it a little harder to play. And of course, you can uh, bounce the ball off of certain parts of your paddle, and that'll cause it to angle off in different ways. Uh, but this is basically, if you uh, if you remember uh, the classic Pong system, I mean, this is it. This is, this is Pong. Here we go. Uh, and I'll just do one more score here, and then I'll back off. We'll do the two-player Pong. Oh, there we go. All right, so let's back out with the escape uh, key. That brings them back to the menu. And let's do a two-player game. Now you can see there at the bottom of the screen it says two players mode. The second player is going to use the plus and minus keys on the numeric pad. And so player one is going to use the up and down, and then player two is going to use plus and minus. So let's go ahead and uh, just hit return on that. And there we go. Playing Pong against myself is actually not as uh, easy as you might think because you're you're trying to switch your mind into which button is hitting which. Uh, but it's just kind of a, to show you how to play Pong uh, as two players. And so if you uh, had somebody to play against, you could play Pong in two-player mode. And let's just 
see how far this goes. Let's go ahead and, uh, as you can see, this is this is basically the same version of Pong, but instead of playing against a computer, you are playing against another human who's using a, a different set of keys. And here, I'll just back out of that. Okay, so, um, and then um, uh, let's just show off the Pong clock, which is kind of cool. So instead of uh, score, you're gonna get the time. And so there you go. So if you need something that is going to kind of show off uh, a clock in the background, this would be kind of a neat thing to uh, to have running on your system. It's not actually playing a real game. It's not actually keeping score. It's just uh, running two paddles automatically. And the, the score up at the top there is really just the time. Anyway, that's the uh, Pong clock. Let's uh, escape out of that. We'll go ahead and quit the, quit the game. And so that was Emeritus Pong. As I said, if you are of a certain age, you may remember the original Pong system. Let's back up one directory. And uh, let's go into uh, EW Snake. This is a standard snake game, so let's do EW Snake. And here we are. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to select uh, our uh, it's all in Italian, so I apologize if you don't speak Italian, but we're going to pick this first one here. And as you can see, it's just your standard um, snake game. So go ahead and pick up all these little dots. I think, you know, at some point everyone's written their own version of snake. Uh, I hit the wall. Anyway, that is uh, EW Snake, and so uh, let's let's try the next one down here. And let's go ahead and just pick a level. We'll just we'll pick level one so that we were not on the same level we were before. Although it's Snake, I mean it's like that's all you get. And you can see down at the bottom of the screen, it's showing I picked up uh, eight of these out of fifty-four. Counting up by two. Oops. All right, let's try this again. There we go. All right. Ooh, picked up two in a row there. Oh, let's go ahead and get to that one again. There we go. That's Snake. Let's go ahead and just run into the wall here so we can exit out of it. There we go. And that's Snake. So uh, let's look at another one here. Let's go and look at F Mines. And so if you're a fan of Minesweeper, you can go into F mines. Now I will say that this one loads a little slow, but once it's loaded everything, it actually uh, runs pretty well. So we'll do F mines. And again, it's gonna take a while to load here and that's perfectly okay. Uh, depending on your system, if you're running this maybe on real hardware, it might run a little bit differently. Uh, on my VirtualBox system, uh, this is what you're seeing. It's, you're, uh, it, it does take a while uh, to load, but it looks, really good. The graphics I think are very well done. High resolution graphics. And so let's go ahead and do an easy game. And again, it's going to take a while to load this uh, this level. But as I said, once it's uh, loaded the data, it, it plays, you know, very, very well. And so F mines obviously stands for fancy mines. Now, the way that I always like to do it is uh, to hit the corners first. So we'll do the upper right hand corner. Ooh, that's a two. So somewhere in here are two mines. Let's just pick another corner. Ooh, there we go. We've got a lot there. Okay, so that's a one. And so that means that out of the, all the surrounding squares, only one has a mine in it. And that's this one over here. So we'll right click on that. You probably know how to play mines. Uh, this must be another mine over here. Um, somewhere up, up here in these three is one, right? It's a one mine, because you can see here, this is a one, but really it's in these bottom two. Uh, 
uh, which tells me that this one is empty. So I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, now I'm not sure then if this is where the mine is or if the mine is down here. Maybe there's another one up here. So I'm not quite clear what's going on there. So let's just do another corner. Ooh, okay, that's not really helping me either. And we'll do another corner. Ooh, okay, there we go. That, that, that cleared off a lot. And so now I know that that's a mine and that that's not and that these are cleared and then that's a mine. And so that's a mine and that is clear. And then that's a one and that's that's where it is and so i know that these two are clear and so that's a mine and with that one there i know that these three are clear and with that one here that tells me that this one's a mine so i'll right click on that and this two tells me that these two are mines and this two tells me it found the two mines already so that one's clear and four well i got one two three or four already so i know that these three are empty and I have two mines to go, so let's go see if we can find them. They're, they're somewhere, obviously, in these three. Now, this two tells me that one of them is over here uh, because it's got one of one flag up here, and that means the other down here, which means that one of them is right there. And this one right here, well, I know where one is, and so that means that this one has to be clear, so I'll click on that. And there we go. I found them all. It took just under two minutes. And that is Fancy Mines. F mine. So I'll go ahead and click here to exit and we'll go ahead and quit the game. Just wanted to show off uh, that's uh, if you like playing, uh, you know, Minesweeper, that's a, a pretty fun game. It's really well done. The graphics, I think, are very, very nice. Uh, we'll back up one here. Uh, let's uh, let's skip over one. Let's, let's do Smiley. Let's go into Smiley. And it's a very simple uh, game. Uh, written by Jerome Shadell, and you can see there's our smiley. And uh, he, he says that this is a game that uh, he's written as, as sort of an experiment while he uh, writes another one, another game. And uh, so let's go ahead and click, and that starts a little uh, face bouncing around. Now, it looks like it's going to be easy, right? Because uh, the face is moving pretty slowly, and I could move my little uh, paddle, but ooh, it speeds up really, really fast. So uh, every time it hits my paddle, it's going to speed up really, really fast. And there we go. And as the game goes on, as it keeps hitting the paddle, it's going to uh, keep getting faster and faster and faster. And so while it seems simple, it gets really hard really quickly. But very responsive in terms of using the mouse. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Let's, let's see how far I can keep it going. You can see there's a little bit of bounce on the paddle here. Boop, there we go. So it's like the little smiley has a little bit of physics to it. Wow, getting pretty far up here. And, oop, there we go. Just bouncing it around. Now it can't obviously can't go anywhere. This is not quite the same as Pong, but it's the same kind of concept. We're just bouncing a ball back and forth. This, the ball in this case is just a little smiley face. And basically the game is how, how high can you go? It gets really, really fast uh, the further along you go. Uh, and so this is gonna get harder and harder to keep up with a the, with the bouncing smiley face. As I say, it looks deceptively simple because uh, it starts out so slowly, but you can see compared to where we started out, this is already getting quite fast here at uh, 4,600, 4,700. I think it picks up speed again at around 5,000. Yeah, it sort of felt like it just got a little faster there. Oh yeah, it definitely got faster. Yeah, so it's really getting fast now. You can see how it's kicking the uh, the paddle. And, whoop, whoop, ooh, almost missed that one. But game's really responsive to the mouse. Ooh, all right, 10,000, all right. So I'm going to uh, just sort of let it end here. I'll uh, just intentionally miss, there we go. 
And so then you get another uh, smiley up there, and so you can see you have uh, basically three attempts uh, on the game. Once you start it again, but just by clicking, uh, you can see that it uh, uh, starts off at that uh, standard speed. What you may also notice, by the way, is that the eyes indicate the direction of travel, and so that's one way to kind of provide a, a little indicator. Uh, but you know, it's such obvious movement; that you, it's pretty <laughs> obviously easy to tell uh, where it is at any one time. Now it got very, very quick, uh, very, very fast there. So uh, it uh, it's obviously becoming more challenging. It's not starting back at the standard speed that we had earlier. And so basically, the game is how high can you go a score? All right, let's go ahead and intentionally miss this one here. There we go. And I'll just hit escape to get out of the game. Anyway, that is uh, Smiley. Uh, Jerome is uh, working on this one. It's uh, uh, using the Danger Engine. This is for another game that he's working on. Let's back up one directory here. And uh, let's go into, let's go into Nudar. Uh, so, Nudar. And this is a very interesting dungeon crawler. Here it is, Dungeons of Nudar. Um, controls. So I need to use the arrow keys. That'll move and turn. But you can also strafe left and right using the Z and X keys. Uh, you can cycle through your inventory using the S or 1, 2, and 3. And you can pick up items with A and you can use the current item with space. And if you need to, you can just obviously exit the, the game with escape. Let's go ahead and hit enter, and that'll start our game. So here we are. It sets the stage. The Citadel, you, a former priest and crusader, were summoned to investigate and ultimately perform the ancient pagan rituals required to purge the sacred Citadel from once again falling into demonic hands. Like the ones that came before you generation after generation, you'll have to assess the situation and preserve your own faith. This holy land is in your hands now. So here we go. Enter. And it's really well done. Um, you know, it's sort of a 3D, but you know, it's it's turn-based. So you have to uh, hit the up arrow uh, to go forward. You hit uh, right to go uh, to turn right. Uh, and you can turn all the way around. This is where I was back here. Uh, obviously, left goes that way. That way. And of course, uh, you know, it said to uh, to do strafing left and right. I can do Z, and that'll uh, strafe me off to the left. And then X will strafe off to the right. Now that looks like a, a little friendly dude over there. Let's go and see what he's up to. And there he is. Now, um, yeah, he's he's uh, he's hitting me with a little sword, so I'm going to use my space, and that'll uh, use my sword against him. There we go. All right, I destroyed him, and I don't think there's anything over here. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything over here. A little a little monolith. Okay, let's go in here. A little church, and here we have some friendly people waiting for us to do some damage. Let's go and turn right here and do some damage here with my space. There we go. All right, now he's dropped a, uh, a little medallion, so we'll just uh, use the A key to pick that up. There we go. I gained 20 faith, and then we'll go and talk to this guy over here. Talk to, meaning I'm going to use my sword. Oops. There we go. All right, I'm going to hit A to pick that up. All right. And then uh, what else is in this room? So here I have some gates, but nothing I can do with that. Uh, so let's um, turn around and go through this doorway here, which is open. And what's over here? Oh, another friendly guy. So we'll strafe over this way and we'll go over there. Oops, strafe over one more. And use our sword against him. There we go. And uh, we'll use A to pick up the uh, little medallion that he dropped. Now over here is some closed gates. But if you go over here, you can uh, now use that object there and you can hear mechanisms in action so we did damage to rope right that was the rope that was going through this little hole here and so now we'll go over here and through the door 
here we go. And that is the first level of Nudar. And I'll kind of stop there, but monastery is the next level. Sudden realization, you might be, uh, be late, uh, brings tears to your eyes and fear to your heart. Uh, and so this is the next level of Nudar. And if I hit uh, enter, that'll obviously start the level. And here we are. I'll just keep uh, turn around here so you can kind of see where I'm at. And that is uh, Nudar. So I'll do escape to get out of that, and I'll let you explore that game on your own. So I'll do escape. And uh, let's back up one directory, and let's play one more game. Uh, let's go into Q Tetris. And so you might be familiar with the Tetris game, the classic Tetris game. And so we'll do Q Tetris to play Queen Tetris. Now, I don't know if the sound will pick up on the system. I didn't check my sound levels, but this one actually does support sound. Now, if I go into options, uh, I know that the controls are not exactly how I would use them. And so you can see here that to rotate left and right, you're going to use the delete and end keys. Uh, now, I can change that, so I just hit enter on that. And then I'm going to do, let's do Z. And then down here, do enter on that and do X. And so now I've got rotate left and right is with a Z and X. And let's go back one screen and back one screen. I can also use escape to back up one screen. Let's go play a game. I'll play the classic game here. All right. And Pretty easy pieces so far. And there we go. Here we are. And let's put that one right here. And we'll put that one there. And we'll put this one over there. And so if you remember the classic game of, uh, of Tetris, I mean, this is, this is it. I think the graphics are very well done as well. And hmm, this is a challenging one. We'll put that one right there, I guess. And then uh, we'll put this one over there. And ooh, let's fill that hole. There we go. Now I can use this piece to fill that hole. And I can put this one over here to fill that end. And so this is this is Tetris. And so if you like playing Tetris, uh, here you go. You can spend quite a bit of time playing Tetris on, uh, on FreeDOS using QTetris. Anyway, that is, uh, I'll, I'll kind of stop there because obviously Tetris is Tetris. So um, I'll, uh, but again, this is, I think, a very, very well done version of Tetris. So I'll, uh, I'll exit the game there just by hitting escape and into quit. And so those are some of the games that you can play on FreeDOS 1.3. RC5. Uh, before I go, I just want to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen, so thank you very, very much. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to recognize you, especially here as well, so thank you again for that. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.